the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. I am the whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program in radio history. And Signal Gasoline is tops, too, tops in quality. It takes extra quality, you know, to give you extra mileage. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the Signal Circle sign in yellow and black that identifies friendly dealer-owned Signal stations from Canada to Mexico. And now, the Whistler's strange story. Meeting on 10th Street. On February 25th, the final edition of the Daily Bulletin was a sellout ten minutes after it hit the street. Across the top of the page, headlines screamed that the district attorney's office had at last won its long fight against the city's organized crime. But the real drama was below, neatly centered on the page, in an article by Stephen North, the Bulletin star reporter, an article titled Retraction. In 25 years in the newspaper game... This reporter has never before been forced to print a retraction. Today, I break that record. Last week, I called a man a weakling and a coward. I vilified him, told him he'd failed me. I said these things not knowing he had already made up his mind to tackle a tremendous task. I said them not knowing that Gerald Wright, an ordinary citizen of this city, intended to challenge gangdom's most vicious killers alone. Now I want to correct the injustice. The story of Gerald Wright is one that every reader of this newspaper Every taxpayer of this city. Yes, the story of Gerald Wright was all there in neat black type, worded in the dramatic style of a famous reporter. It was all there, but the truth. Actually, the true story had begun late on a Friday evening more than a week before when a man entered a drugstore on 10th Street. Sam, if I was a reporter like this guy, North, I'd lay off this Murder Incorporated ring. They're too tough. Would you hear what happened? No. They shot North. Put him in the hospital this afternoon. A couple of slugs in his leg. I tell you, if that guy Excuse doesn't like... Oh, yes, sir. What can I do for you? Uh, a bottle of soda pop, please. Pop? Yes, sir. Right back this way. We got cream, strawberry... The flavor doesn't matter. Huh? I said the flavor doesn't matter. Just anything, huh? I want to take it with me. Oh. Okay. That'll be 15 nickel deposit on a bottle. There you are. Uh, yeah? My doctor's given me uh, some medicine. I'm supposed to take it with water. This will work the same on it? Well, sure, but it's the first time well, I Another ever thing, heard... there's a movie house around here somewhere, isn't there? Movie? Yeah, one three blocks down. There's a couple more over on Park Street. Punk pictures, though. Now, if I was you, I'd go downtown. Thanks, just the same, but the picture doesn't matter either. Funny one. Guy comes in here and... Wait a minute. Sam! Yeah? What's the matter? That guy, did you see which way he went? What do you mean? He just went out the door. I... Is something wrong? I don't know. He come in here asking for soda pop. Flavor didn't matter. Said he had some medicine to take with it. Well? I don't like it, Sam. Look out the door and see if you can see which way he went. I got an idea. That guy's going to commit suicide. <laughs> the prologue of Meeting on 10th Street, the Signal Oil Company is bringing you another strange story by The Whistler. But now, friends, just for a moment, let's suppose this were a quiz show, and you were asked, 
What gasoline is known as the go-farther gasoline? What would your answer be? Well, if you've lived out west any length of time, you know that from Canada to Mexico, Signal is known as the go-farther gasoline. Now, naturally, we're mighty proud of Signal's good mileage, but even more so, we're proud of what makes such mileage possible, the extra efficiency today's Signal gasoline gets from your motor. Because when your motor runs more efficiently, you also enjoy quicker starting, faster pickup, and smoother, knock-free power, the things that make driving more fun. That's why folks who want superior performance, as well as those who insist on mileage, are both switching to Signal. They've discovered that to get the tops in gasoline quality, there are just two things to remember. One, in gasoline, it takes extra quality to go farther. And two, Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. And now, back to the whistle. Yes, Gerald. When it was all over, the Daily Bulletin had your whole story in a special article by Stephen North on page one. The whole story, that is, except for a few rather important details. There was nothing about that first Friday night, was there, Gerald? Nothing about the bottle of soda pop, the square box of medicine from your doctor. And most ironic of all, there was only a passing mention of Denise. Beautiful, dark-eyed Denise. The cause of it all. The girl for whom you'd live or die. You were thinking of Denise, of course, as you stood at the box office of the all-night theater, remembering the way you met, the way she laughed, even remembering how sorry she looked when she sent your world toppling with her promise to marry Bob. You were thinking of the nightmare that followed, the three days and nights of self-torture that ended with your decision to take your own life. Yes, Gerald, as you settle back into the darkness of the back row of the theater, your decision is made. Denise is lost to you, and there's no point left in living. You hadn't intended to pay any attention to the picture, of course. But as you become aware of the movements of the actors, listen to the words coming from the screen, you what find you yourself fascinated. For? Come on in. Where's Ruby? Outside. She heard about it? Yeah, she's all busted up. You know, it's a shame in a way. She loved the guy. Shut up. Okay. Well, tell me, how did it go? Same as all of them. They found them three miles out of town in a ditch. Solid, huh? No slips? Joe Slade don't make no slips. That's why he cost you five grand. Well, I guess that does it. Yeah, that does it. You must love her, well. Putting out five grand like that to get the number one boy out of the way? You think so? Well, that's a good guess. I'm not paying you to guess. Beat it, Mike. Okay, boss. You feel a strange excitement watching the hero, a two-fisted, good-looking young man, carry the story forward. He had a rival, too, Gerald, just like you. But he found another way of solving the problem. You watch the screen, listen more avidly as the story progresses. Ruby. Yes, Alan? I'm sorry, honey. <laughs> oh, Alan, I... I don't know what to do. Suddenly, you're seeing yourself up there on the screen in place of the hero. And the girl becomes Denise. Denise. Yes, Gerald? I'm sorry, honey. <laughs> oh, Gerald, I, I don't know what to do. But these things happen, darling. But these things happen, darling. Just got he just got mixed company. up in the wrong company, don't you see, Denise? The police say it was a gangster murder. I, I still can't believe I'm it. I'm going to stand by you, darling. Please remember that. Oh, thank heaven, Gerald. Thank heaven for you. You sit there, fascinated for the rest of the picture, seeing yourself as the hero, fighting back, winning Denise in the only way open to you, with a hired murder. And that's when you suddenly recall something else, Gerald. The news item you heard the clerk discussing back at the drugstore. The headline the newsboy was shouting outside the theater as you came in. Uh, excuse me, please. I'm sorry. I, I want to get out. Night final. Eat all about it. Reporter shot.
got in gang revenge attempts. Here. Extra. Here, here you are. Oh, thanks. Extra, extra. Oh, Stephen North, author of a series of articles published by this paper exposing activities of an alleged murder incorporated ring in this city, was injured in a shooting fray this afternoon on 18th Avenue. From his bed at St. Michael's Hospital, North asserted it was an attempt on his life by the ring he was exposing. Murder Incorporated. Stephen North. I wonder if he really knows who these people are. These men who... who murder for hire. Taxi! Taxi! St. Michael's Hospital. You'll forgive me for saying I was a friend of yours, Mr. North. The nurse wouldn't have let... All right. What's on your mind, Mr. Wright? I've been reading your articles, Mr. North. Uh Uh-huh. I think you've done a magnificent thing. And, well, that's that's what I wanted to tell you. That all you want? Yes. I I just think the average citizen simply doesn't believe that there are people who commit murder for money. That's why it's so important these things come out in the open. Why... Until I read about what happened to you this afternoon, I couldn't believe it myself. And you just came here to tell me I was doing a good job. That's right. I thought if you knew, people like me were behind you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As I said, most of us just can't believe it could happen. Why, if anyone told me I could go to someone and pay to have a man killed, why... Uh, It's possible, all right. They got an organization, Mr. Wright. Just like a factory that makes shoes or bottle tops. Only they manufacture murders. Now, come on. Why don't you tell me why you really came here? Well, no, you'll probably think this is ridiculous. Maybe I won't. Go on. Mr. North, I want to help. You want to... I knew you'd think it was crazy, Mr. North. It, It just seemed to me, if these people are as highly organized as you say, that the best way to get evidence against them would be for someone, someone they couldn't suspect, like me, for instance, to go to them and... And by a murder. Well, yes, that's it. So you're offering to help me. Tell me, right? What's your business? What do you do? I work in a bookstore. The Aegis Bookshop. Yeah, how did you... I know I'd seen you before. I couldn't remember where. Well, you can check on me, Mr. North. That is, if you... If I have any sense. Yeah. Only at this point, I'm wondering what there is to lose. What do you mean? Well, I've been careful up to now... And all it got me was a couple of slugs in the leg. Maybe I do need some help, Mr. Wright. Maybe I ought to just believe what you're telling me and... Look, I want you to understand this. These boys are tough. They'd as soon shoot you as look at you. I know that. And yet you're offering Mr. To... North, you see, I haven't anything to lose either. Except your life. I'll take the chance. If you'll just tell me where to go, who to see. Anyone see you come here tonight? No. Good. You don't come back here, understand? If you want to contact me, use the phone. Then you'll let me help you? You're asking for it. I'm giving it to you. Now, here's what you do. Tomorrow, you go into the elite barber shop. I think that's the front. Yeah. The barber in the back chair's name is Ralston. Be sure you get that chair. Say, Tommy Roy sent you. But open up gradually. You know, there's a guy you hate. He's in your way. Mind my saying so, Mr. Wright. This seems kind of silly. Uh, I don't understand. I just cut your hair yesterday afternoon. Of course, I can use the business. Oh, but... I know it looks funny. I I just wanted to talk to you some more. So... About what? That... that fellow I told you about yesterday. Uh, the guy that's been bothering you? Yes. Why are you telling me? I... I thought you might be able to, to do something about it. So a fellow's been getting in your hair, so you naturally figure the place to come to is a barber shop, hmm? It's not that at all. Well, then forget it. Uh, yeah? Tommy Roy sent me here. Roy said out of town. I talked to him before he left. That's so? Look, if you want to check on I me. did. After you left yesterday. Your name is Gerald Wright. 1270 Atlantic Place. You work at the Aegis Bookstore. 
The purest bookshop in St. Louis before that. Came here in 43. That's no left. I just said I checked you. Well, are you satisfied? Maybe. There's a pawn shop, Mr. Wright. 28 Waldorf Street. Other side of town. Why don't you drop in there one of these days? Yeah. The fellow that runs it specializes in antique guns. Tell him you're a collector. Yeah. That you're after a rare one. A dueling pistol called the Bronco Luigi. Remember that. The Bronco Luigi. You know what you mean. I think maybe he can give you just what you want. <laughs> Bronco Luigi dueling pistol, you say? No. No, I don't believe we can help you. Oh, well, well, just forget about it then. A, a, a friend told me to try this place. He, he's... Never mind. I, I uh, better just be going. a minute. Yes? This friend. What was his name? His name? I don't know. He, he runs a barber shop. But really, it's... Look, a... uh... It's all right. That is, you can at least leave an order for a Branca Luigi. I can. But they come high, you know. How high? One thousand dollars down. That is, with your order. Another thousand on delivery. And when could you deliver? That's a date we never give out, my friend. So many uncertainties. Uh... Who gets the package? I'll let you know later. Shall I bring the money here? Well, that won't be necessary. This is an outside transaction, not entered on my books. Just mail the money to post office box 228. Box 228. Well, I'm going across town to see a friend. I'll stop at the bank on the way. Very good. And I'm sure you'll be satisfied with our uh, services. <laughs> I hope you don't mind my dropping in like this, Denise. Certainly not, Gerald. A good friend is always welcome. A good friend, yeah. Please, Denise, won't you reconsider now before I... Before you what? Denise? Denise, you know I'd do anything to make you happy. <laughs> oh, Gerald, we've been all through that. I've told you I'm in love with Bob. Now, don't spoil what's left. Look, you don't know what you're doing, Denise. Oh, I'm sorry. Really, Gerald... But Bob's arriving in town Wednesday. We'll be married next weekend. I see. Oh, I almost forgot. Could I use the phone? Mm, of course. You know where it is. Front hall. I'm sorry, Denise. Two, four, nine... time. This is the customer who asked about the Bronco Luigi pistol. Go ahead. I'm sending the money. The name of the man who's to receive the order is Sinclair. Bob Sinclair. He'll be in town Wednesday visiting a Miss Denise Evans. That's 119 Allison Street. How do we know the guy? What about a picture? A picture? I haven't got... Wait. What about a picture of the girl? He'll be with her. Denise? Yes, Gerald. Oh, forget something? No, I, I was just wondering if it isn't asking too much, Denise. Could I have your picture? My picture? Oh, why, certainly, Gerald. I'd like you to have it. I'll get one for you right away. Thank you. Having it will make such a difference. <laughs> Twenty minutes later, you drop the picture and the money into a mailbox and hurry on to the hospital to see Stephen North. You aren't prepared for his burst of anger when you tell him you're quitting. What do you mean you can't go through with it? 
Was that just a song and dance you gave me about wanting to help? Oh, I'm, I'm afraid my enthusiasm sort of carried enthusiasm. me Enthusiasm. You're away. like all the rest. Cowards. Nine out of ten in this town are just like you. I know you. how you feel, Mr. North, but I Never can't... mind the words. Oh, I know what happened. You tried it. It got too tough. You got scared. No, that isn't it at all. Well, what is it then? I, I, I don't think you'd understand. Yeah, I think I do. Run along, right? You're not the first volunteer assistant to check out on me. From now on, I carry the ball alone. I'm sorry, Mr. North. So am I. And don't worry about being yellow. You've got plenty of company. The line forms on the right. And it's a long one. Good night, right? Good night. <laughs> You're relieved as you leave the hospital, aren't you, Gerald? And certain that Stephen North will forget all about you. The waiting for Bob's accident isn't pleasant, but there isn't much that can be done about it. And then one evening, the telephone in your apartment rings. Yes? Gerald? Oh, oh thank heaven you're home. Denise, what is it? What's the matter? It's... it's Bob. He, he's dead, Gerald. He was shot. Bob shot? Now, please, dear, get hold of yourself. I'll grab a cab and get right over. No, no, I... I, I do want to talk to you, Gerald, but I can pick you up. What do you think you'd better, dear? I'm, I'm all right. I'll be there in ten minutes. All right, dear. And Denise? Yes? I... I know there isn't much I can do at a time like this. But you know I'll always be around, wanting to help you. Yes. Thank you, Gerald. Thank you. Whistler will return in just a moment with the strange ending to tonight's story. Meantime, an important question for drivers. Are you missing anything? Well, you're missing something very important if you haven't gotten that free checkup of your fan belt and radiator hose, which signal dealers are now offering. Perhaps you didn't even know that these items need periodic checking, because most service station operators never mention them. But then, signal dealers aren't like most operators. You see, each signal dealer owns his own business and has a personal interest in keeping both you and your car happy. He realizes that fan belts and radiator hoses being made of rubber can either wear out or deteriorate from age and possibly cause serious trouble, which explains why almost 2,000 signal dealers throughout the Pacific Coast states are now offering this valuable service without cost or obligation. Moreover, if your fan belt or radiator hose has worn to the danger point, signal dealers can, in most cases, replace them while you wait. So for safer driving and your own peace of mind, plan now to stop at your neighborhood signal service station for this free checkup. There's no better way to see for yourself the more thorough, more conscientious service cars get at signal service stations. And now, back to the whistler. Well, Gerald, now you know what Stephen North has been writing about. The incredible efficiency of the ring of hired killers known as Murder Incorporated. Bob Sinclair is dead. And as Denise stops by your apartment to pick you up, you know that in time she'll be yours again. And then as she drives away toward the edge of town, you remember the envelope with the other thousand dollars in it, addressed to box 228, the final payment for murder. Denise? Yes? Would you mind stopping at the next letter box? I have to get this off. Oh, oh, of course. Well, here's one right in the corner. Just take a second. turning down here. Wait a minute. I thought so. Mm -hmm. What's the matter? That that car in back of us. It's made every turn we have. That's why I just swung onto 10th Street to check. Oh, you're imagining things, Denise. I don't like to keep repeating it, but 
You just can't let this upset you so much. Yes, I know. You're right. But I... I just can't get it out of my mind. It was so crazy, so unnecessary. Bob knew about guns. He's hunted all his life. Hunted? What do you mean? Oh, to sit there in his own house in Hartford, cleaning his Hartford? rifle Hartford? And... You didn't tell me... Oh, he, he was going to do some hunting on our honeymoon trip. Oh, it's the usual story. The unloaded gun. His sister was in the next room, heard the shot. Denise... Well, Gerald, what's... Denise, turn off. Drive back toward town. What? That car in back, it is following us. They think I'm Bob. Bob? Why? Oh, please, Denise, don't ask any questions. Just do as I say. Well, what do you mean they think you're Bob? What, what difference... There isn't time, Denise. Hurry. It, it, it's a fix and it's still on. They'll kill me. A fix? They'll kill you? What are you talking I tell you, about, you, there isn't Gerald. time. I, I, I couldn't stand to lose you. I paid them. I paid them to do it. Paid who? They think I'm Bob. They'll kill me now. That's why they're following us. Gerald, you... you... No, don't slow down. Well, they're catching up, Denise. Denise, please. You you were going to have Bob killed. That's it, isn't it, Gerald? Yes. Yes, anything. Only don't stop here. Please. Please speed up. Denise. It's all right, Gerald. Oh, Denise. Denise, please, don't. You wanted to take his place, didn't you, Gerald? Well, you can. Oh, Denise. Denise, they're coming. Yes, Gerald. Well, I won't let them kill me. Let me out. I've got to get away. I... No, don't. I'm the wrong man. I'm the... Yes, there were two stories of Gerald Wright in the meeting on 10th Street. The real one that Gerald himself could never tell. And the other one that appeared on the front page of the Daily Bulletin under the byline of Stephen North. And so it was through the self-sacrifice of Gerald Wright that the police were finally able to bring the entire Murder Incorporated ring into custody. What prompted this courageous man to step out of the role of ordinary citizen and undertake the hazardous task that cost him his life, we will probably never know. But one thing is certain. The people of this city will always revere the memory of Gerald Wright, hero. Let that whistle be your signal for the signal oil program, The Whistler, each Wednesday night at the same time. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Signal has asked me to remind you, to get the most driving pleasure, drive at sensible speeds, be courteous, and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life, possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story were Elliot Lewis and Kay Brinker. The Whistler was produced by George W. Allen with story by Joel Malone and Harold Swanton and music by Wilbur Hatch and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Next Wednesday, for a full hour of mystery over most of these stations, tune in a half hour earlier. Enjoy The Saint as well as The Whistler. This is Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS, where 99 million people gather every week. The Columbia Broadcasting System.